All right, Palette Master Element 1.3.18. Should you upgrade? Let's find out. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. BenQ recently released Palette Master Element 1.3.18. My recommendation for this version is to stick with the current install version, especially if you don't have an issue with it, if it's known to pass validation, then I would just stick with the version that you have right now. Point 18 is really more of a bug fix, and if you don't need any of those bugs that they are fixing in this version, I would just stick with point 17 for the time being. And with this being said, BenQ have also updated their Palette Master Element website to include multiple previous version of program so you can download it. My recommendation is to download the previous known stable version, keep it as an archive so that you have it just in case the link gets taken down for some reason. From what I have been told by BenQ, they are going to keep these link up, but it's just one of those things that we can always take as a caution. Now here are the release notes for 1.3.18 on the Mac side. Is that it fixed Rec 709, default luminance issue in basic mode, PME force close issue, fixed translation issue, fixed calibration fail issue, and increased compatibility with M1 Pro, M1 Max, and also M2. I've also tested 0.17 with the M2 machine and it works just fine with it. So like I said, it's one of those things where it's like you have to weigh the pro and cons of this, whether you want to upgrade this version or not. Like I said before, the recommendation is to still stick with 0.17. As far as the Windows side of things, they have fixed the Rex 9 default luminance issue in basic mode. And again, you're not really going to be using basic mode, especially if you follow my instruction. I always tell you to go in advance because you can control multiple different aspects of the calibration process itself. Fixed PME force close issue, fixed translation issue, and fixed calibration fail issue. Now let's talk about fail calibration and some of the common themes that I have been seeing recently. Whether you use a Mac or a PC, there are certain system settings that you need to turn off. This is especially important if you have a device with a built-in camera. So for instance, if you have an all-in-one device such as an iMac or an all-in-one PC or any laptop device, it's crucially important for you to go in and turn off some of the settings that will automatically adjust the display brightness or especially on the Mac side they will have True Tone enabled. True Tone will constantly measure the color, temperature of the light in the room and change your display, both internal and external to match with the environment. This is automatically going to cause a calibration failure or a bad calibration on your display. So these are the things that you need to turn off before. And I will leave a link to multiple of these guides in the description below based on the OS version and all these other information, you can check that out yourself. Secondly, if you just purchase a new Mac, and if you own a Mac before, my recommendation is to set up the new Mac as a brand new machine and avoid using system migration or a time machine backup for restore. Part of the reason why is because you don't want to bring in all of the information that are on the previous operating system over to the new computer that you're just setting up. The other thing too is that many of you are now just coming from the Intel Mac to the Apple Silicon version. The other thing that you don't want to do is to bring the Intel binary into the Apple Silicon binary and mix all those things together. It's just much cleaner to start off fresh and also when you do that, it helps you avoid many calibration failure that will come with Palette Master Element as well. And lastly, one of the other things that you want to make certain is that the device OEM software, the calibration device that you have, whether that is an i1 or an x right device, a Calibrite device or a data color spider device, you want to look in your system to make sure that none of the programs are starting up with the system. These are what they call trays. So for Mac, you will look up in the top right corner in all the menus at the very top and making sure that none of the OEM software are running. If you're on a PC, it will be on the bottom right corner. You will click on all those little icons. It will pop up. Just make sure that none of the software is running in the background because if it does, those software are going to take priority communicating with your calibration device. And that's what's causing a lot of times palette master element not working, not communicating properly, or sometimes to recognize the device, sometimes it doesn't. Or when it goes to the start calibration screen, it just stop, it won't go anymore. That is because the OEM software is running in the background, so make sure to turn those off. Another thing I want to point out is that 0.17 and also 0.18 now fully works with any Mac, including the Mac Studio, M1 Max, M1 Ultra, 
without any issues. In the earlier release of Point 0.17, there was some issue with the SIP or System Integrity Protection. BenQ have updated Point 0.17 a while back. You know, once they know about the issue, they have updated that version right away. The distribution online, so you're not going to run into those issues anymore. And Point 0.18, you won't be running into any of these issues. And for those of you to have the SW2700PT, 1.3.17 and 0.18 is known to calibrate all SW2700PT firmware versions, so you don't have to pick and choose which version to install and get a pass calibration, so that's a great thing. If you want to know which version your display is firmware-wise, you would just simply look at the regulation tag on the back display, look at the manufacturer date, and compare that data to the previous slide that I just showed you. On the Mac side of things, I have tested this with pretty much many of the SW displays, including all of the M1 variants and also M2, and also Intel Mac, what I found is that this minor annoyance tends to happen more with Apple Silicon. It doesn't cause a failed calibration. It is not catastrophic by any means at all. It's just some minor annoyance. And that is when you are done with the calibration or when you're done with the validation process and you click on finish, the display would go dark. I mean, it, it acts as if it is going to sleep, but it's really not. And the computer still recognizes that the display is connected to the system. A quick fix for this is simply power off and power on the display again. That tends to solve the issue. Occasionally in point 0.17 when I was testing this, I found that powering the display doesn't really do a lot to fix the issue and sometimes you have to remove um, the display cable and reconnect it back again. You may have to do that, but I haven't found that I have to do this with point 0.18. Just something to note and keep in mind if you're running any of these two versions that you may see. On the PC side of things, it's again really all compatible with the SD returns. 700 PT. However, one of the things I found out on a PC is that whether you're running Windows 10 or Windows 11, and I've tested them on both, different computers by the way, is that when you launch Palette Master Element up on a display that has a USB Type-C connection and on, also on the previous generation that does not have a USB Type-C, even though the USB cable is plugged into the display and also the computer, I would get an error that pops up saying that you have to connect the USB cable to the display before you can run the calibration. A simple fix to this is a restart of a system that tends to solve the issue, but it is something that I have found quite frequently in my testing. And this is also another reason why I recommend 1.3.17 for the time being for PC, because stability issue is not really a big deal with 0.17 on PC for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. A couple other things I also want to mention as well is that there is a change with 1.3.17, which is the previous version. In that version, BenQ have taken out the profile type selection, so you don't have the option to go in and choose whether you want to calibrate it or to build the profile using either matrix or the LUT type anymore. What they have gone in is use the matrix by default. So in point 17 and point 18, it will look like what you're seeing here. So don't be confused when you don't see that anymore. If you watch my other previous videos, I always recommend that you use either matrix or 60 mid LUT depending on your operating system. BenQ have solved that issue and we they have just gone with matrix and it's still going to produce a great profile without any problems whatsoever. And here are the known's best and safe calibration setting. Pretty much they are the same between the different versions of Palette Master Element. The recommendation is the same. 0.17 and 0.18 is pretty much exactly identical. And with 0.16 and before, it's the same thing. The only thing that you have to add on with 0.16 and before is to choose the profile type. On Mac, I recommend using Matrix. On PC, I recommend using 16-bit LUT. That tends to work really well, but if you're using newer version, just don't even worry about it. It's automatically chosen as Matrix by default. On the Mac side of things, use ICC Profile version 4 and on PC, even Windows 10 or Windows 11, still stick with ICC Profile version 2 because the compatibility the issue between ICC Profile version 4 and Windows is still an ongoing issue. So let's just avoid that altogether. Now, a couple other things I want to mention here is that the black point that I recommend is use 0.3 nits, which tends to produce really great black tones without crushing the blacks or making the blacks look 
you know, gray or anything or muddy by any means. However, if you have a Spider 5 device, and this is the only device that I recommend using instead of 0.3, use 0.5. It has a tendency to scale better with that and doesn't crush the back, black tones. However, if you have any other device, 0.3 tends to work really well. And I have run multiple tests on this already on both Mac and PC. As far as best settings go, Pano Native 0.3 tends to work really well for both Mac and PC. Safe settings, change that to Adobe RGB, you're going to be okay. And if you're doing Resolve, well, then the recommendation is to use Rec. 709 and set the gamma to 2.4 instead of 2.2. And 0.3 as the black point, again, it will scale everything just nicely for your video editing work. And with this in mind, just remember that all of these are all suggestions based on a lot of time and testing that I have invested into this. You can substitute any RGB primary in that you like. You're not really just forced to use any of the ones that I have recommended here. So if there's another RGB primary that you use in your workflow and you prefer to use that, feel free to substitute those in. Again, the same thing with black point. It's just that the black point, I've done extensive testing on this and I found that point three tends to scale the best across multiple different versions, multiple different OS, multiple different SW displays. So it's a value that tends to work really great and it makes the black looks really true black and it scales really nicely without looking muddy. And with this in mind, my wrap up for the recommendation for this version is to download the previous version of archive just in case and for now stick with point 17 if you really feel like trying point 18 out you can certainly do that but point 17 is still going to be the most stable version based on my testing so far that works with all the display anyway i hope you find this helpful if you have any questions or comments leave them in the section below give this a like subscribe and hit the bell if you're new and in our trust.